How to hold and use a pick or plectrum. This lesson is part of the GCH Guitar Academy First Steps Guitar Course, which was written for absolute beginners so they could learn the first few really important steps towards learning how to play the guitar. If you're new to this channel or new to the course, you might want to catch up by watching the previous lessons. And you can find those by clicking on the link down below in the description to the playlist of all the lessons in the course. And if you'd like the PDF ebook that accompanies this course, that's got all the chords, scales and tablature in, you can get it completely free at www.ebooksforguitar.com. And it's really useful to have if you want to continue on with the course. Before learning how to use one, let's take a very quick look at the plectrum itself and the variations that are available. Choosing the plectrum that's right for you. If you're new to the world of guitars, you might not know that there's a massive choice of picks. So if you've got a pick with the guitar and you just don't get on with it, there may be a pick out there that is better suited to you and your style of play. The first thing to consider when buying a pick is the size and shape of the pick. Most people, when they first start playing the guitar, aren't too fussy about the size or shape of the pick, as long as they can pluck the strings with them. But as you get more advanced, you'll get more fussy about the size and shape of pick you use. And a couple of factors that might affect your choice of picks are how much of the tip of the pick do you use to strum the strings and do you find the pick slips through your fingers? If you do find the pick slips through your fingers, you could either choose a larger pick with more surface area to get hold of, or one with a hole in it, or one with some texture on the surface that will prevent your fingers from slipping. Another important thing to consider is the amount of give or flex the plectrum has. Now, two things affect this the thickness of the pick and the material it's made of. For a pick that doesn't flex or hardly flexes at all, you can get metal picks or wooden, or you can choose a thick plastic. However, for a pick which is very flexible, you can choose a thinner plastic. And even different plastics have different properties. So if you like a plectrum with a lot of give, you can use a thin nylon pick. The amount of flex a plectrum has gives it advantages and disadvantages. So for example, if you wanted to play lead work very quickly, a more solid pick is better because you can keep the movements of the pick short and it will release the string quickly. Whereas a softer pick is a better choice for someone just learning the guitar or learning to strum chords. And this is because the flexibility makes it more forgiving so you don't overpluck certain strings. Other factors that might affect your choice of plectrum are things like the gauge of strings you use and the style of music you play. If you play electric or acoustic guitar, the plectrums remain the same. But for this lesson, you just need to be aware that there are differences. And if you want to experiment and you've got no money, it's worth checking out what's in the recycling. Here's some I've made out of old cards, and in the past I've even made them out of milk cartons. How to hold a plectrum if you've got a plectrum nearby, try following what I'm doing and see how you get on. Firstly, make a loose fist. Then lift the thumb and place the plectrum on the side of the first finger, somewhere between the nail and the first joint. Then replace the thumb to hold the plectrum in place. 
Now unfold the three fingers, leaving the first finger and thumb in place. Finally, adjust the plectrum until it's comfortable for you, making sure there's not too much of the tip of the pick sticking out. Once you've found the perfect hole for you, look at it and memorise it. And every time you pick up the guitar to play it, make sure you return to the same hold with the same length of pick. By doing this, your practice time will be far more effective and you'll improve more quickly. Where on the guitar to strum? This sounds a bit strange at first, because you obviously strum the strings. However, where you strum the strings is quite important, and there are recommended places, but also other factors that you should be aware of. The recommended places to strum are over the hole if you're playing an acoustic guitar, and between the pickups if you're playing an electric guitar. But this is just a recommendation, which might be hard for some people to hear if your teacher's been telling you that's where you have to strum the guitar, because that's not true. And we use the position of where we strum the strings to change the tone of the guitar. I'm going to do an experiment where I strum an electric guitar in six different positions and an acoustic guitar in six different positions and hopefully you'll be able to hear the difference. The electric guitar The acoustic guitar Right, let's do that experiment again, but this time I'll strum the guitar at both the extremes so you can really hear the difference. The electric guitar. The acoustic guitar. Hopefully, what you heard is that when you strum the guitar close to the fingerboard, it sounds very rich. Whereas, when you strum the guitar close to the bridge, it sounds very tinny. Now, later on in the guitar course, you'll learn how to use this to your advantage, because you can use it to create expression in your music. However, for now, will just strum in the recommended positions, which is between the pickups on an electric guitar and over the hole for an acoustic guitar. The reason they suggest you should strum at these points is because these are generally accepted as being the places where you get the best tone for the guitar, not too tinny and not too rich and boomy. Using the right amount of pressure. One of the most common problems I see with people I teach in the first few lessons is that they dig the plectrum in too hard. So beware you don't do this. You don't dig the plectrum into the strings and you don't want to see the strings bend. You just graze across the top of the strings so that you can hear the sound clearly but you're not causing it to over vibrate. If you dig the plectrum in too far when you're strumming, you won't be able to move the plectrum smoothly across the strings and you'll over pluck the strings. So any potential buzz will be exaggerated and you might even cause the guitar to buzz where under normal playing conditions, you wouldn't hear it. I'll remind you about this lesson as we go through the course, because this is a bad habit you don't want to get into. You don't want to dig the plectrum in too far, you just want to graze the strings. 
Hopefully you're ready to move on to the next lesson now, where we'll actually play some chords. But don't worry if you're not ready, as at the moment I'm re-recording all of these early lessons to bring them up to date. If you want to see the new lessons as they're uploaded, and if you haven't already, please like, subscribe and hit the bell icon. And then you'll be notified when I upload the new lessons. But also, you'll help the channel grow so I can keep making lessons. Thank you very much for watching, and I really hope you enjoyed the video. And remember, if you haven't yet got the PDF ebook of this course, you can get it completely free at www.ebooksforguitar.com. Thank you very much again.